Standing before us today on the auction block is a young girl. She is 12 years old. Her potential is unlimited. She is a gifted child. To the highest bidder, I say, many years of service can be obtained from her. There are two intently interested in bidding on this soul. One will use many wicked tactics to reach the highest bid. His goal is to make this soul a slave to sin. He must deceive to accomplish his goal. Yes, Satan always paints a beautiful picture. How true that song is. Satan knows that sin always takes a life on a downward path. Being the deceiver he is, he doesn't want anyone to see what a hard slave master he really is. Facts reveal that his promises for a great pleasure-filled life are false. Sin always wrecks and ruins lives.
To state the facts, I must tell you that one bidder has invested all he had in the purchase of this soul. Jesus stands making his bid for this soul. Sometimes he does that through a preacher, a Sunday school teacher, a Christian friend, or a parent. His life and his love for that soul is shown through them. Class, I am so glad to see you here this morning. I have had a burden for you this week. I have spent time in preparing the lesson, and I want to teach a good lesson. But most of all, I want the Lord to help me to impress upon you that God's way is always the best way. I am praying for every one of you. This bidder has placed special people across this young girl's path to accomplish his will for her. He has carefully planned a special purpose for her life. It will be the very best life she could live.
God has not promised the best of everything in this life. He has not promised a bed of roses, but he has promised that he will supply every need. And you know, his promises will never fail. With all of these facts established, we must stand back and see who is going to win this bid. what all this bitter is offering me. Wouldn't you like to be popular and have people bowing down to you? Come this way. Don't choose to be Miss Popularity, having everyone bow to you, when your name could be known in heaven if you will do what Jesus says to do. If you'll come this way, you will find more pleasures than your heart could wish for. This is a way of fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Seek not for worldly pleasures, filling your life with all fun. For Jesus really satisfies right now till life is done. How would you ha like to have your name in lights and have all the money you could ever want? Don't seek for fame or fortune or to see your name in lights. Jesus has a plan for you. He'll take you to heavenly heights.
shall I do? Could it be that someone has loved me so much that he was willing to pay the price for my redemption? Could it be that I could really be rid of this burden of sin?
from that burden of sin. If I'm free, I may as well take my liberty.
As you gaze upon each child walking onto this auction block, may you be reminded that in all reality, their souls are being sought by two powerful influences. It is our responsibility to do all in our power to encourage them to make the right choices, most definitely having opportunity to touch their lives. You will play a major role in the choices they make. Mom, Dad, you can do nothing better for your child than to give them the priceless privilege of growing up in a godly home. It matters not that your children are the most popular kids at church, school, or camp. It's of such little importance that they are outfitted in the most stylish name brand clothing, but it is of eternal importance that you do all you can to create in them an appetite for spiritual things. Mom, let your children have pictures on the walls of their memory of you, their mother, often praying, pouring out your heart to God. Dad, take the responsibility of being the spiritual leader of your home, pointing your children to the upward path. Teach them to love not the world, but to sink themselves in loving and serving God. Pastors, Sunday school teachers, family and friends, you too are playing a vital part in shaping and molding these little lives. You may ever keep in your mind that they are never dying souls. They will be in eternity somewhere. Do all in your power to create a reverence and a hunger for God rather than direct their interest to the things of the world. Be ever so careful to be spiritual examples in your love and service to God, in your everyday living, and in all your entertainments. They will be greatly influenced by their environment and the individuals who touch their lives. There's nothing that stamps its impression so much upon a child as the constant object lesson of a godly life. Just as true, nothing will be a greater hindrance to them than an inconsistent life. May you be challenged with a new sense of your great responsibility in helping these little ones make it to heaven. true it is, the uh, lesson of the auction block, <laughs> and every one of our children will pass over that block just like they did here this morning. And one of the reasons that we are here today as pilgrims, and a great part of our heritage is the fact that God brought us out that we might bring our children and our people in, not only to a spiritual experience, but into heaven itself. <laughs> I, I stood one day and I sat in a bank president's office and sat in front of his desk and he had a line of people out there and he closed the door and he said something like this uh, you know, I finally told him we'd talked a little bit and he'd loaned our conference some money for our campground in Anderson and uh, I said boy you got a lot of people waiting he said there's always people waiting but I want to talk to you he said uh, I don't understand why you people invest so much money in having a camp meeting and those things that are involved in that camp. And immediately there flashed in my mind an elderly lady, an old saint, about 82 years old, sat on the third row of one of the last camps that we had. And sitting in front of her was a mother with a little child and that lady stood up and the glory of God was on her countenance and tears were dripping off of her chin as she was talking about her own experience and glorying in the presence of God 
and there was a radiance about her. She may be in heaven today. That was several years ago. But I watched that little girl as she looked up into the face right behind her of that godly, elderly saint. And she stared and she looked, and there was a look of awe on her face. And it dawned on me that right there, God was painting those memories they sang about on the walls of their heart. There was a transfer taking place, one generation to another, of memories of that sacred moment. And I told my banker friend, I said, you know, uh, I, you can't put into money uh, what happened in that moment, the transferring of a godly heritage from one generation to another. And so God brings us together uh, for the purpose that he might meet with his people and keep us in the straight and the narrow way. Praise God. I got excited talking to the bank president. He told me I don't go to church anywhere. Um, and he wasn't bragging about it. It was a statement of fact. And after I had left the, uh, the conference president's job and late one night uh, over at, uh, when I was president at UBC, my telephone rang. And there was a voice that rang a bell far away. He said, um, uh, Jim, do you know who this is? And I said, I know you sound like a voice from the past, but you're going to have to say a little bit more. And then um, in a very somber tone, he told me his name. It was the president of that bank. And I was shocked that he would be calling me at 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night. And uh, so we went back. He said, do you remember those talks we had? I, yes, I do. And he said, you know, I told you then I didn't go to church. And he said, my wife just died tonight. And he said, is there any way possible that you could come and talk to my family and uh, preach my wife's funeral? You know, there was something that God made an impact on that fellow. Praise God. But I tell you, this scene should make an impact on every one of us. It's all about building heritage. It's about the tomorrows. Praise God. And one of the, one of the great things that should rise up in the heart of every one of you, parents, you ought to purpose in your heart to snug up closer to God. There's some things you might recklessly do on vacation or away from home or away from the eyes of other people. But remember those object lessons those little kids are filing away in their heart. Praise God. Every one of our pastors, we ought to snug up a little bit closer to God and contend for the way. Praise the Lord. And keep the glory. Keep the glory of God on our hearts. Praise God. Amen. I want to thank uh, the Victory Trio for the investment that they've made not only this year, but I think, what, 33 years maybe? I told Penny I didn't know she was that old. But, and she smiled like one of these little girls up here. But I thank the Lord for the investment that they have made and also pastors and pastors' wives and those of you that have made the effort to drive hundreds of miles to be in this camp meeting today. It will be rewarded one of these days when we fold our tents for the last time and stand in the presence of Almighty God and look at those that have made it and many of them will come to you that have sacrificed to make it possible that we have a camp and say, thank God I got it settled at the camp meeting. Or thank God for the influence of the camp that set the marker to bring me back, that bring, to bring me back to those old-fashioned ways. Praise God. We're glad you're here this morning. Uh, I don't know what to do with you, but I guess we'll uh, have to rearrange some furniture up here and um, like to have our, whoever's in. Do you have people appointed to? All right. And I need to talk to our ushers also, if the ushers would come up at this time. All right. Let's have our, some music, and we'll rearrange things here. Praise God.